Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it's been um, a busy week and um, I started the week reflecting on the um, roundup that I did last Friday and thinking, oh, I'm not going to have very much to say when I do the check-in this week. Um, well, suffice it to say I was wrong. Um, there's lots and lots of different things happening at the moment. And um, so some of what I'm going to go through today is um, an update on perhaps something that we talked about last week, a reminder of things that we talked about last week, but also one or two new things um, to make you aware of. So um, lockdown continues. We're at the end of the third week of the third lockdown. Um, and I don't know about anybody else, I'm finding it quite challenging. It's quite difficult to stay motivated when you're just in the house all the time. And literally about three minutes before I started this webinar, I had both the kids running upstairs needing help with their homeschooling. So I've locked the door and told them to leave me alone for the next half an hour. But I'll deal with that later. Anyway, moving on to um, more important things. Um, so this week did bring some good news for some. So in particular, um, hospitality and other businesses who were closed by the government in the first lockdown. Um, the Supreme Court ruled that insurers should pay business interruption claims. So the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, had won its court case to get insurers to pay out for business interruption due to the first lockdown in the spring of 2020. And I'm aware of at least one client this week that believe that they can now make this claim. So that's been really, really positive news um, for if you absolutely had no choice but to close. And um, the Supreme Court says it will substantially allow the appeal by the FCA and the hospitality groups in particular. So the decision affects approximately 370,000 policyholders and over one billion pounds in claims which should now be paid out. So it's very significant. So small businesses including pubs, cafes, wedding planners, beauty parlours argued they faced becoming insolvent when they were refused compensation by insurers for business interruption policy claims on losses caused by the first national COVID lockdown. I think it depends on your policy and how it's worded, but it's absolutely worth checking. Um, the Supreme Court ruling will provide guidance on the claim adjustment process and it's hoped that this will be progressed quickly. So we've got a link and in the email that we'll send to those that have attended today, we'll send, we'll put the link in there to the guidance that's um, currently on the Supreme Court website to see, um, so you can start to do a bit of reading to see if it applies to you. So the FCA have stated that they will be working with insurers to ensure that they now move quickly to pay claims that the judgment said should be paid, making interim payments where possible. Insurers should also communicate directly and quickly with policyholders who have made claims affected by the judgment to explain the next steps. So um, look out for that. So job retention scheme, if you're claiming for more than 100 employees, so if you're a large employer, HMRC have updated their template. So if you're claiming for 100 or more employees through the job retention scheme, then you need there is a different template that you now need to, to complete. So just watch out for that. Um, the job retention bonus. So you may recall last summer um, when the uh, very first um, job retention scheme came to an end, there was an announcement that to encourage employers to keep people on, that in um, if those employees that had been furloughed in January, sorry, if those employees had been furloughed in the first lockdown, but were still employed by the end of January 2021, then there would be um, a payment of a thousand pound to the employer for each employee that was still on the payroll at the end of January. Now, given the second and the third lockdown and the extensions that have been made to the job retention scheme, those that job retention bonus won't be paid. It was due to be paid in February and it's not going to be paid. So, and the reason for that, obviously, is because the furlough scheme, um, the job retention scheme and furlough support has been extended to the 30th of April of this year. So you can continue to furlough your employees. And as we talked about last week, you could do that on a part-time basis. It doesn't need to be full-time furlough like it was at the very beginning. But obviously it means that that retention bonus um, has been um, postponed. Um, now, whether or not they reintroduce it at a different date later, 
time will tell. Watch this space. Some other good news though for employers, um, the kick starts, excuse me, kick start scheme grant. So if you're an employer looking to create 29 or less job placements for young people, you can apply for funding as part of the Kickstart scheme. So there's lots of information on the government website about this. If you Google Kickstart scheme grant, you'll find it. Again, in the follow-up email to this presentation, we will send you the link as well. Um, there's also been updated information for organisations who want to be a Kickstart gateway. And there's more information about that and help employers apply for the kickstart scheme so if you're a small employer with only one or two vacancies then you have to apply via a kickstart gateway um, it's a little bit complicated i'm not going to go into all the details now because of that but i just wanted to flag it up as an opportunity potentially if you're looking to recruit people um, the highlights though of the scheme so the scheme provides funding to create new job placements for 16 to 24 year olds on universal credit who are at risk of long-term unemployment. Employers of all sizes can apply for funding, which will cover 100% of national minimum wage or the national living wage, depending on the age of the participant, for 25 hours per week for a total of six months. Um, the associated Employers' national insurance contributions are also covered and the minimum automatic enrolment contributions, which is the pension contributions, are also covered. And you can spread the start date of the job placements up until the end of December of this year. So it looks to be that this scheme is going to be open all year. So if you're looking to take on um, any new employees between the ages of 16 and 24, you should look at this. You should see whether or not you're able to claim any. Um, support funding in relation to that. So what you'll get um, uh, £1,500 per job placement. This is on the larger scheme, I think. This is for setup costs, support for young person developing their employability skills. If you get someone to do this for you, so if you use a kickstart gateway, you'll have to agree how you share this money. So there'll be organisations available to help you do that. Um, so when if you go through the kickstart gateway then it'll be 300 pound for each job placement to cover admin costs so it's worth looking at like i say if you're going to be taking anybody on um have a look at this any young people on um, and also on the subject of grants um but there is lots of local government grants available and i'm not totally convinced they're particularly well uh, publicized so obviously we're in chichester so if you go onto the, the Chichester website, there's lots of details there about local grants that um, businesses affected by COVID can apply for. Some of them have um, closing dates, so do watch out for those. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time. I've had a number of people that have left it too late and hadn't been able to gather all of the information they needed to submit the claim before the deadline. So, you know, left it to the week before and then run out of time because they needed to gather information. Um, I had a call with a client early on in the week they um, applied to the local district council for a grant in relation because their business had closed because of COVID and they didn't get a favourable reply. They were told that they weren't eligible. Um, and obviously the council gave the reasons, but the client went back and said no and um, basically challenged that decision and explained why they be believed that they were eligible because the, the form perhaps didn't allow them to al articulate it well enough. Um, and they were got the, the decision was reversed and they were they received a grant of five thousand pounds, which was just an absolute godsend to that business and will be um, for many others in the same position. So look at your local um, council websites, apply for as many grants as you believe you're entitled to. And but if you don't get a favourable response, then um, challenge it. So on to taxation matters now. Um, Self-employment income support scheme grant extension. So a reminder, if you're self-employed and you've been affected by COVID, the third grant is, uh, applications for the third grant are now open. The deadline is the 29th of January, so next Friday. So you've got one week to get that application in. You don't need to have claimed the first two grants to apply for the third grant. And um, 
but you need to keep records. You need to make sure that you can, if, they're, if they challenge you, you can express why um, you believe you're entitled to it. Again, don't leave it till next Friday to do it, particularly if you've not applied for the first two. You need to do it through the government gateway and it can be a little bit of a pain um, to get that set up if you haven't already done so. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody of that. It's really important once that date is, is gone, the opportunity um, to claim that grant is also obviously gone and it's not something we can do for you. Your accountant can't claim it. It's got to be through your own personal gateway. Um, there are some videos on HMRC, on YouTube, um, HMRC, through the HMRC website that um, talked through how to apply. Um, so take a look at those. And there's also some other videos from HMRC about the coronavirus statutory sick pay scheme and things like that. So there's lots of help and guidance um, that you can find online to help you do that, um, or obviously come and talk to us, we can help you as well. Still on the subject of HMRC and January deadlines and tax, um, worried about your tax payments this year. So um, you may well have had a tax liability last January, which you, sorry, last July, which you deferred and is now due. Um, HMRC are offering payment plans, but again, you need to apply for them. You can do it through your government gateway, providing it's not a particularly large sum, um, but get in touch with them sooner rather than later. Um, we can't do it for you. Also applies to VAT. So the VAT that was deferred last year, you can get a payment plan for that. That's a direct debit um, and apply for your government gateway. Talk to them get the agreements in place. Um, the money's got to be repaid, work out what you can afford, go to them and tell them that's what you can afford and get something agreed. Um, on the subject of funding though, remember that the closing date for the, to apply for the government back loans has been extended. So um, last year, you may not have taken the bounce back loan because you didn't feel that you needed it. You might have had some savings or whatever at that point and felt that you could, um, you could manage. Um, a third lockdown, though, may well have made things that bit more challenging. So you might want to consider a bounce back loan. The deadline to apply for the bounce back loans is the 31st of March. So we've still got a couple more months. Um, the bounce back loans are up to um, up to £50,000, maximum of 25% of your business turnover. If you already had a loan last year but took less than you were entitled to, then you can top it up so you can go back to your bank and ask for additional bit to top it up to the full amount that you could have you could have claimed last year to be eligible to apply for a bounce back loan you need to be a business in the uk you need to have been adversely affected by covid obviously and you need to have been established before the 1st of march 2020. similar thing goes with to the for the larger businesses that need more than fifty thousand to see them through so that's the corona coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, so the civil loans, they've also been extended to the end of March. Those loans go up to 5 million, need to be in the UK, turnover up to 42 million and have been adversely affected by the coronavirus. So yeah, just have a look at that. That might be um, a way of helping you fund these liabilities if, um, if you don't want to get a payment plan with HMRC. The bank will probably want to see some projections, particularly if you're going for a larger loan. Um, so they're looking at cash flow projections and um, forecasting and all of those sorts of things. And of course, let us know if um, you need any help with that. If you use Xero for keeping your accounts, we've got a fantastic new add-on software called um, Fluidly, which can prepare um, a cash flow forecast in no time at all based on your data that's in Xero. Um, which is great, really, really useful. And lots of, we're rolling that out with lots, to lots of clients um, already that, that use zero for their accounts. Moving on then, so I guess the other big event um, in recent weeks is Brexit. Um, all the noise that caused by lockdown and coronavirus, I think we almost forgot about it, but, um, but Europe didn't. So um, we, Brexit um, is a massive impact now on for lots of businesses. I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores of all of that now because I'd keep you to lunchtime and probably you'd probably all fall asleep. Um, fundamentally, though, there's loads of guidance um, on the government website. There's stuff on our website. If you are 
importing goods from the EU, exporting goods to the EU, moving goods to or from Northern Ireland, providing services to EU countries, traveling to the EU, living or working in the EU or staying in the UK if you are an EU citizen, you need to read the guidance. You're going to be affected if any of those things um, apply to you. So in terms of data sharing with the um, countries in the EU, there's lots of information um, on and changes in relation to that. So um, I'm not going to, this isn't a Brexit presentation, so I'm not going to go any more in any more detail at this stage, but we have got stuff on our website. Um, and to please give us a call if you need any more, more guidance on that. Um, no doubt more information will be coming out over the next few weeks. New HMRC developments on the horizon that will affect many of our clients are the changes to VAT for those that operate within the construction industry. So it's referred to as the domestic VAT reverse charge for construction services. That just falls off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, and we will be doing a specific webinar just on this topic in February. Um, there's been lots of talk about this since 2019. Um, but due to Brexit and COVID, there's been various delays. At the moment, it looks like this is going to come into force from the 1st of March, which is a slightly odd day. Um, but from the 1st of March 2021, um, the, re the domestic VAT reverse charge for construction services will apply. Um, again, we've got there's a quite a long blog on this because it's quite complicated. It's on our website. There's a PDF of a leaflet which is being circulated out to clients and we will do like I say a specific webinar just on this topic um, in the first second week of February but just for today um, some key points basically if you are your customer is registered for VAT in the UK and you are so your you report payments for supply is supported within the construction industry scheme which has been operating for years and, and, and clients are very familiar with, if you're caught by that, then this new VAT rule will also apply. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. It's quite complicated. And um, yeah, that'll do for today. Watch out for our, our list of dates and register for that specific webinar in due course to find out a little bit more about that. Finally then, for today is just some key dates to remind you of. Um, so make a note for your diary. Um, 29th of January, as I've already said, the Self-Employment Income Support Scheme grant, that's the deadline for the third grant. Get your claims in this weekend, I would suggest. Um, 31st of January, as we all know, self-assessment self filing deadline. HMRC aren't budging on moving the deadline and they will issue penalties for late returns. Um, they will accept COVID as an excuse for late filing, but why put yourself through the pain of having to appeal against a penalty with HMRC? So our advice is get that return in. Don't delay if you can possibly avoid it. Obviously, there are many people with very challenging circumstances at the moment, which means that isn't possible. But if you can find the time, and again, this weekend might be the time to do it, get that finished, get it submitted. You don't want to be dealing with HMRC on the appeal process. Um, 31st of January, you need to be paying your July 2020 tax and your January 2021 tax bill, um, unless you've agreed a payment plan, get in touch with them if, um, if you need to arrange that. 1st of March, as I've also just said, domestic VAT reverse charge for construction services will start to apply. That's going to be keeping us busy, I think, over the next few weeks. Wednesday, the 3rd of March, budget day. Now, this is the first budget since March of uh, last year, 11th of March, 2020 was the last budget as the autumn budget was canceled. Goodness knows what that's gonna bring. The government support during coronavirus has been incredibly um, generous and valuable to some, not everybody. There are some people that haven't benefited, but nonetheless, it's been expensive. So it's going to be fascinating on the 3rd of March to find out um, what changes may well come. So what we're going to do is on Friday, the 5th of March, this webinar will cover the key announcements from the budget. So it's not going to be a detailed review because it'll only be two days and there'll be a lot to digest. 
but there will be some headlines. So we'll do a quick webinar on the Friday, the 5th of March, discussing the key news from the budget. And then the following week on Friday, the 12th of March, we hope to do a more detailed um, review um, for those things that we particularly think will impact our clients so much more specific. And yes, keep an eye on your emails, keep an eye on um, our various social media channels and you'll see what sort of topics we'll be covering. Um, we may well do a number of specific webinars, depends on, on what happens in the budget.